success for individuals and careers are going to come to an end when people reach a point when you think you know what all the right answers are, but you don't even know what the right questions are anymore. So that means you're focused on the wrong thing. And in the world we live in today, ladies and gentlemen, that is lethal. That is lethal. I'm not here to give you, nor do I give any audience, answers. What I do is to help people determine what are the right questions. Because you know what happens, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know the right questions today? First, you become irrelevant. Then you become obsolete. And then you become extinct, like that. And the point was made earlier that having the vision isn't enough and it's exhausting to consider. You also have to determine how you're going to communicate it, both externally to your customer and obviously to your staff. And using Dr. King as a metaphor, can I remind you that when Dr. King stood up on the Mall in Washington in 1963 in front of half a million people and delivered arguably the most famous speech in the United States in the 20th century, he did not. He did not get up and say, I have a strategic plan, <laughs> did he? And he gave 10% of the American people something to aspire towards and dream about, and he changed the course of history. Vision. How about some vision about customers? Now, it's not going to make a difference, ladies and gentlemen, whether your customers live in London or Lagos or Lima or Las Vegas. They're going to have access to information in real time, aren't they? And they're going to be comparing everything. Everything. They're going to be obsessed with comparing product, price, quality, service. And you know what else they're going to compare? And it's going to become a chief determinant in the manner in which consumers buy in the future, beyond our wildest imagination. They're going to compare your ethical dimension and where you stand on human rights and animal rights and the environment and GM food and perhaps more than anything else, biotechnology, which will become the single most significant social and, and scientific issue and political issue probably for the rest of our lives. I'm going to take a mention. Interactive television will change the manner in which people shop, live, communicate, all of it. Figure that out. Take that down a couple of levels. What else are they going to do? Organize into buying communities, defect at the click of a mouse, have power like never before. Forget trade unions. How about customer unions? You watch. Are you thinking about those things in your business? How about customers demanding to be paid for data? None of us are going to give it away anymore. It's so valuable to everybody. Why are we giving it away? You know, the biggest paradox of the age of connectivity, I think, is that the more connected we get, is the more individual we want to be. Think about it. Folks, I, I think mass marketing is dead. I really do. I think it's dead. When we all have our individual web pages, which some of us already have, and if you really think it through and extrapolate it out, just think what the what it's going to mean when babies are born, and of course their whole genetic map is determined. So all their health care is individualized. Perhaps all their education is individualized. And you think you're going to be able to do anything in a mass market way in a world like that that's going to exist soon, 10, 15 years, within our lifetime? These are issues that your businesses have to be thinking about clearly. And jobs are going to be organized. I think you already have an understanding of this, like Hollywood studios organize themselves. Hollywood studios do not employ people. They organize talent, don't they? To work on projects for specific times, and they bring in the next group of most talented people for the next project. I do think we do live in a dream society where, you know, our wealth and privilege is unspeakable and beyond our imagination. And I do think that what will be remembered for our generations combined is what we've done with the freedom that we have. How big our dreams have been. Think of the freedom that we have. It's quite remarkable. And a thought from Toni Morrison, Nobel Prize winning American author, in the last novel that she wrote. You can dream the dreams as big as you want. This is describing a character who was full of life and feisty as hell, but she was a victim her whole life. 
And this is what Toni Morrison said about the character. She had plenty of dreams, but she had very few plans. You gotta have a plan. 